Valentina, and for those of you who don't know, is an open source fashion design software. Um, we think that uh, there's a lot of room for change in this industry. It's not an open industry. It's uh, the second biggest industry on the planet. It's $1.2 trillion USD a year. It's also the second biggest polluter on the planet and the biggest user of child and indentured servant and slave labor more so than the mining industry. It's really awful. So it's the richest, but it also is built upon the backs of slaves. This is a horrible thing. Um, we, um, uh, let's see. In, in uh, making change in this, this industry, uh, by implementing a few, by starting at the beginning of the design process, we think we can build a new, a new suite of tools that can change everything here. Um, we're replacing the old Victorian assumptions about body proportions with actual body measurements, so that patterns that fit an Italian will also fit someone from Korea, because body measurements, body proportions are not the same things. Uh, and most of our patterns and our current technology are based on assumptions that were made over a hundred years ago about how we're shaped or how we should be shaped. Um, we're also replacing expensive tools and uh, these proprietary interoperable data formats with open uh, source code and open data formats. Um, we want to introduce collaborative design. This industry is fraught with secrecy. It's unnecessary. Um, and, and wastes a lot of time, it's inefficient, and also keeps people from entering into the industry that could otherwise make a decent living. Um, so it's artificial barriers to entry. And uh, another thing, this small batch manufacturing and batch size equals one is where we want to go. That's what we're trying to empower. We're making that profitable. Right now, the current average minimum sizes for an order of a single shirt in a given fabric is between 5,000 and 10,000 units. That's Average. There are 500 million garments made every year. This is this is a tre tremendous or, or more. This is a tremendous wasteful, tremendously wasteful uh, industry. So, so we have Valentina, and we've come up with this. Uh, Vermont has come up with a, a beautiful approach to this problem. Um, but what is it actually doing? What we're doing is we're taking body measurements plus math formulas that we've been able to express, you know, that, that can be expressed at the level of 10th grade algebra and trigonometry. You know, if you want to do it on paper, you can do it with that level of, of math. Body measurements plus this math together can make a pattern that fits precisely you. So there's a lot of less ways. If you can, if every garment that was ordered has a customer attached to it beforehand, think how much waste is, doesn't occur. You know, just in terms of textile, uh, just throwing textiles away. 15% of fabric waste occurs whenever a garment is cut out. So if that garment never sells and it just gets passed along and passed along to the, to the resale trade till, till it winds up as a rag and then is used a, as the last time and then puts, gets put into a dump. Think of how much waste we can prevent. So anyway, uh, we have uh, Valentina and hopefully is this going to show? Uh, all right. I may not be able to show you how Valentina works because it's not cycling to my window of my Valentina software. That's fine. We'll skip that. Um, and I can give you a demonstration later if you wish. You can just come ask. Um, so where are we? How does Valentina work? Um, we have, you know, a GUI. We have sort of a draw mode where you create your formulas and draw your lines and each line is a, f is a result of a beginning line, a formula, and an end line. And the formula can use body measurements, you can use absolute measurements, you can use percentages, you can use angles. It's just, it, it's really, really a very creative process. Um, so uh, what we're doing next is uh, we're trying to engage the community. So we're, we've, we're updating the website, the guys from Fabricators. I don't know if any of you know John Phillips from the Creative Commons background. Anyway, uh, he and his team are helping us with a website uh, to update our current Valentina website. Uh, we are also, Ramon and I are creating uh, opportunities for, for people to, to contribute to make documentation and translations. 
Um, we're also creating a place so that we can truly implement shareism in this industry so that just like open clip art, you can download a pattern, copy remix, make your changes, put it back up for the next person in the, in the ecosystem to pick up and make their changes. Because fashion has always been copy remix. Uh, that, like, like I said, people try to copyright, and, but you know, their work is always built on the shoulders of others, of the, the body of work that's gone before. It's not, no one can do this in an independent vacuum. Uh, so we're all copying from each other, and it's a great thing, and it always changes all the time. Um, so next, and this is where I want some of my team to come up and talk, Nico and Jonas and Roman, if you'd like to come up as well, and Valentina. Uh, we are uh, implementing 3D features because we recognize that the methodology that we use to make a real uh, physical product can also be used to expand the offerings in 3D resources. Right now there's a scarcity for 3D garments. If you want to make a 3D garment, you're still kind of tugging at the points to make it fit your avatar character. So this way, you generate a pattern for your avatar, for your, for your game character, and it already fits. You don't have to tug it. And uh, you can have access to complex patterns. You don't have to worry about you know, the space between your texture and your, uh, it's, anyway, it's good. So Jonas is the lead developer with Make Human. Nico is with um, the CNR ITZY. Yes, yeah, uh, in Pisa, the University of Pisa uh, Virtual Computing Lab, yes. and they have a lot of contributions uh, for this segment of, of this project. Okay, you can go on. So, hi everyone. Uh, as Susan already mentioned, I'm uh, Jonas Hokier. Um, I'm the, currently the lead developer at uh, Make Human. Um, some of you might already know our software, so what do we do? We create 3D humans. Um, we do this in a, 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 a parametric fashion. We have one single 3D base mesh that we deform into... Actually, we can deform it into almost any possible uh, human realistic shape. Um, this has um, great advantages for uh, what we want to do because we can because this um, this base mesh will always be the same. Uh, go to the next slide. Ah, okay. So um, this is an example of uh, some of the different uh, body proportions that we are able to do. So the the power of Make Human is in, lies in the fact that we can do all of this with just one single base mesh as is illustrated here. Now, for, for clothes making, for measuring, this has big advantages because once you have, w once you have defined what, what you want to measure, bef for example, you take the measurement of this point to this point, you measure these li this line, you can reuse this for any type of body. And uh, this is where Make Human and Valentina can uh, cooperate and uh, help make, um, um, yeah, what, what, we, what we are actually um, intending to do is um, you input your uh, body measurements and we try to create a 3D human that fits your sizes. So up, this is um, a new challenge. As up till now, we, we used so the parameters that make human is using. And perhaps I can show a demo of this. Let's hope this works. Not Is there? Yeah, I couldn't get it to display my um, Okay, but we don't have internet, sorry. <laughs> it's a cool video, I can't believe it. Yeah, okay. Um you know, um Sunday at ten we have a hackathon and then if you're interested I can show you uh, more details on the video then. Um so uh what we do now is we have um, uh, the parameters we use are not fit to for clothing designers. So the challenge we face now is uh, find out a system to go from uh, tailor measurements to and create find a, a combination of make human parameters that will fit those measurements to be able to create a virtual avatar with your measurements. 
Okay. So, can I come back to the presentation? Here? Yes. Okay. So, I am Nico Petroni from the National Research Council of Italy. So, I'm working mainly on geometry processing. So, what we have shown here is a model with a lot of semantical information. So, as you can see here, it's not just a 3D model, it's a parametric model with a lot of information. So, you can actually see how this mesh is well structured. It's not just a geometry, it's a set of quads which are aligned with features, which is aligned with curvatures. It's perfect for a lot of applications, not just rendering gaming. It's also perfect as a parametric model. So what he said before is that you can change measurements and then you can adapt this shape parametrically because the human body is more or less the same. It, it obeys to some kind of proportion. So this is the ideal world, but what happens if you if you want to acquire something from, from real uh, world and try to transform in this kind of parametric because once you have this, so then the passage to, to Valentina, it's easy because then you, you have this proportion implicitly in the model, right? This is a parametric model, you can estimate easily. But you have to get this kind of information from a real acquired body, like your body, right? So, and, uh, and this is where it comes uh, some part of the challenges, and this is a very hot topic in graphics, which is actually how you try to change something that you acquire from some kind of input device in something that you can actually use on a game or any kind of modeling environment in a CAD system or stuff like that. So something which is, that is more structured and full of information, why? Because if you see, there is, a lot of, there is a lot of input device, like on the market, not just 3D scanning, but also something which is very, very uh, cheap and uh, available for all the people, like, you know, this Tango project from Google or uh, Kinect Xbox, so all these kind of, uh, like, um, devices that have, uh, that produce what we call uh, range scan. You know what is a range scan? Yeah, maybe yes. It's just an image with depth, right? And what you get when you're trying to process this kind of image is a set of unorganized points. So it's something which is unorganized and even if it appears nice, it's not actually a model that uh, he's shown before. It's not something very structured. So this is the main difference of course, we, we don't want to put T-shirts on, on a dinosaur, right? So this is just an example. But as you can see, it's like when a, when a modeler, when an artist creates a model, it put all this semantical information on the object. It's well structured. You can see all the different patterns. While if you, if you acquire something with the scanning, you get something totally unstructured. So, and, and also, uh, you actually want to have something like that, like a mesh with, with parameters. So this is the, the gap. So we want to transform something that you acquire in something more uh, structured. And this involves like no rigid alignment and a lot of research topics. And to go on, I will, uh, you can continue and explaining the whole uh, workflow okay. in this sense. Thanks. All right. Um, this is sort of shows the segments of the workflow, very basic. You select your data source, whether it's from your Valentina measurements that you've taken with a tape measure, or you import a 3D body scan, that's unorganized as of yet, or import a 3D character that already has a mesh that meets the qualifications for meshes in another environment. Uh, you pull them into our, our new workflow, and it will create an avatar that has edge loops and you know, all the things that's necessary to, cr to match up the, uh, the measurements that you use for pattern making, which are ne ne not necessarily the measurements that have been used to create an avatar. Um, to so this is a really a new approach. So we have a new set of parameters to create this avatar that's specifically designed to enable clothing uh, generation. Then um, you select your 
design of Valentina, and you can generate a three, export it as a 3D pattern format, import it into a Blender or in, into Blender or a Blender-like <coughs> environment, and stitch the pattern around the avatar because it already fits the avatar. You don't have to tug it; it's already done. So, um, and I just kind of uh, I'm showing. Uh, what the contributions are from team members for each of these things. Uh, Make Human and the University of Pisa for the uh, character generation and, and Mesh, uh, Blender, developers, and, uh, and all, all three groups are for this final environment. Um, thank you. Then uh, at the end of the pipeline, this workflow, uh, you can, I just wanted to, to show you that, uh, so we have, if you select a single pattern, you can have a 3D output and you export your 3D character, export 3D clothing, but you could also go the 2D route, generate a 2D pattern, uh, print it, save it as a PDF to maybe sell to people, print it as an SVG to save, share to others, uh, send it to a cutting table and uh, have fabric automatically cut for you um, and, and sewn so you have a real garment here. Uh, so through the same, same pattern, so theoretically, you could wear the same thing that your avatar is wearing in Warcraft. <laughs> I just think it's awesome. So you could do this, you know. So uh, we have opportunities for 2D development. Ramon, did you want to talk about this, or do you want me to talk about it? Okay, I'm sorry. I'll go ahead and do it. Uh, we have uh, some issues with file formats and file format definitions, uh, exporting to different things. Uh, we have new tools that need to be developed. Of course, um, we have a, a set of, of tools that are very similar, so we, we need people to contribute, and I, I think the bar is not out of your reach if you'd like to, to be a contributor. Um, we have uh, 3D contributor opportunities. Did you want to talk about that real quick? Or Okay. Uh, 3D reconstruction, basically, uh, implementing the things that, that these gentlemen talked about earlier, uh, Jonas and, and uh, Nico. So we really could use some more team members. Um, and our roadmap uh, is, uh, I, I think we're, we're giving ourselves 12 months to develop this, the, the new 3D tools, and hopefully we can hit that mark. Um, so uh, we're online at uh, valentina-project.org, and please contact us if you'd like to contribute. <laughs>